Black Market, the team that shocked the whole 2K community by coming in and winning everything. I gave y'all the Black Market guard build, the log build, and even my personal power forward build. And now to end off the whole Pro-Am build series, the best comp Pro-Am center build. Let's go. Mm, after this though. Shot boy, good shot boy, good shot boy, yeah. come on. I gotta stay where I am. Got on me, get a swag. Get a swag. Good swag, Give corner. Me corner. Give me that. D corner. He baited it. Get it, AJ, get it. Why in power cut? Why in power cut? Oh, yeah, corner. Come on, corner. Come on, corner. Come on, corner. Hey, hey, watch the cut. Cool, watch oh, the pass. Man, back. You know, I'm not moving. He got me, jump. Like, I'm playing his baseline. How does that even happen? Stack it here, stack step, it, step. stack it. Watch the corner Try fade. Try to get it. Oh, corner, man. Bro. Hey. Swag. Force him right, force him right, force him right. I heard you, I heard you. Yes, Penny! Penny! Ooh, Penny. Big board. Huge Good board. Dog. Might be off the <laughs> fucking board. Oh, I'm trapped right now. Damn. Good deed. Good boy. I got Big bad stop, with that. Big one on one and I'm just not playing good. That's all it is. Show. Penny, 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 Penny. Shit, corner. Hey, come on, boy, don't play with me. Penny, come thank on. you, bro. Slip on Come on, bro, I'm live. Come on. Yeah. What's good, you two, man? It's your boy Swag back at it again with another banger, man. Now, as y'all know, this is a continuation of a series that I've been doing of the best pro -am builds for each position, and I finally reached the center position. Y'all have been spamming me on the comments of my other build saying, Yo, when you drop the penny build, release corner center build. I need that build ASAP, swag, come on. So after seeing all the requests, I had to give y'all what y'all want, man. But not only am I going to show you guys corners build, which is the best pro -am popper slash five out center build, but I'm also going to show you guys the best inside center for those teams that play the more typical PNR offense. And these these builds are made for Pro-Am, but for those asking if you can use this in the rec, 100% yes, these builds would dominate in the rec. Enough talk though man, let's get to the builder. So we're going to start with Penny's shooting center build that he personally uses in Joe's black market team that you have seen in Joe's videos. Name doesn't matter, position, you want to go center obviously, handedness is preference, and then number preference. For height, I've seen it all when it comes to Pro-Am center builds, I've seen the short, fast, 6'11", all the way to the giant 7'3". What I found to work best though is a 7-2. Going 7-3 just completely kills your speed, and being 7-2 still makes you a giant while still having good vertical and good speed. As y'all can see, we're gonna go straight to, to wingspan and max it out. You wanna go max wingspan always. And then for weight, we're gonna go to 226 because we're only gonna get 76 strength on this build. That's all we're gonna focus on. So we wanna be as heavy as we can while still keeping that 76 strength. And then body type, you can go with what you want. I want build. Heading to the builder, we're gonna start with the physicals. For speed, we can go to a 64, but I honestly think 60 speed is good enough for a shooting uh, shooting center, especially one in the five out. Since the majority of your time is gonna be spotting up on offense and then playing corner defense, 60 speed allows you to still be able to rotate on defense and swing down to the paint pretty fast. We're not gonna touch Excel since that's mainly for speed boosting. And then for strength, we wanna go 76 like I mentioned earlier. The reason for this is because 76 unlocks silver brick wall. And trust me guys, I know what you're thinking. Wait, didn't you just say this is shooting five out there where you sitting corner? You're not saying strange, why you need brick wall for it? reason for this is because I personally believe if reaching 76 rating specifically unlocks a different tier in a badge, like going from bronze to silver, that rating must perform a lot better in comparison if you only went 75 strength. And also in prime with box outs and all this, you want to have decent strength in order to compete in the paint. For vertical, we want to go 75. It's been tested by 2K Lab that vertical is super good this year with getting boards and blocks, so we want that high. Stamina takes a little bit of a hit though, but like I said, you're mostly spotting up and typically using double Gatorade bars when playing comp prime, so 82 is good enough in my opinion. Heading to defense, we want to go 82 interior. Hitting 82 specifically gives us that extra badge and also unlocks Hall of Fame workhorse, which is nice to have. As a center guarding corner, you're going to utilize interior when your team calls a rotation and you swing down to the paint as y'all see here. Or maybe you see a mismatch in the paint like your point guard got stuck in the paint guarding a bigger player and you run down to try to help get a contest. 
because it's only certain times you'll be down in the paint as a center i don't think it's necessary to go super high 90s interior i think 82 should do the job just fine heading to perimeter we go 60. we're able to go all the way to a 65 but to save attributes and also because you don't even get an extra badge for going higher we stay at 60. i've seen some centers have no perimeter on their on their center builds and that's crazy to me Without perimeter, even if you're seven foot tall, they'll be able to shoot right in your face and you won't barely get a contest. Having 60 as y'all see in the clips, you're able to play in between multiple defenders and still contest multiple shots since you're tall and have high perimeter. I can't stress how important it is to be able to do this because shrinking the floor and being able to guard multiple people off ball relieves the defense so much and allows the other people on the court to rotate and swing more freely. Moving on to steel, we go 63, which gives us that extra badge. And again, this is another aspect where I don't know why I see center builds with no steel. Not having steel rating is the worst because you can literally be in the best position at times and the ball would just go right through your hands. As y'all can see with corner, though, with corner though, he plays the lane so perfectly and he literally steals almost everything that goes his way. He only gets bronze interceptor on this build, but I feel like he has Hall of Fame because watching him play lanes is amazing to see, I can't lie. Whether it's jumping the pass or baiting the defender, corner is always lurking for that steal, man. Getting into block, we, we can get 99 on this build for that Hall of Fame anchor, but in all honesty, it's super expensive to get and I don't really think it's worth it for a prime center build since we're mostly guarding the corner, but we go 93 block to get that gold anchor. As I can see from the clips, man, 93 is more than enough in my opinion for those instances where you do have to swing down to the paint on defense and get a contest and help your teammate out. It's just that 99 costs so much overall and going 93 allows you to play good defense while still keeping more attributes to put elsewhere. As we head to the rebounding, we want to go 94 old board. Going 94 specifically unlocks Hall of Fame Box Out Beast, which is a must have for Comp Prime. And then we go 89 D board for the extra badge. Even though I do believe defensive rebounding is more important to have, we went 94 on the offensive board because it's actually easier, uh, it's actually cheaper to upgrade your offensive board than your defensive board on this, on this game. So doing this allows us to save attributes to put elsewhere on the build while still getting that Hall of Fame badge we want. And when I tell you this build snags, man, this build snags. Corner has saved us in so many occasions, getting clutch O boards, D boards. Even when it looks like he's out of position, his player just soars through the sky. When only getting gold rebound chaser on this build, uh, you're still 7-2 though with a 75 vertical, so this allows you to snag even on top of 7 threes. And the part that's the best about this is as y'all can see in the clips, yeah, only, like it's only a rebound, but when it's a rebound that leads to you passing out for a 3 in a close game that you're playing for thousands of dollars, little stuff like this really goes a long way when playing comp prime. As we go back to the builder, we're going to skip over playmaking for now since this build has unique playmaking that I'm going to show you guys last. And we're going to move to shooting. For three pointer, we can get 78. And I know some of y'all will just max it out without thinking because y'all like, Come on, swag. The higher the three, the better. We got to get highest three possible. There's no reason not to. Well, we're actually going to go 77-3, and the reason for this is because going 78 does not give us an extra badge, nor does it give us any tiers in badge that we want. You do get Hall of Fame Comeback Kid when reaching 78, but come on, like no one's going to use that badge. So it's best to save that one attribute to bring out the best capability in the build overall. For midi, we also want to go 73, and although you're not going to shoot much midis in prime at all, this allows you to get 16 total badges, which allows you to run a silver 3-3 badge, which I recommend to use catch and shoot. Now, the way corner shoots, you would think he has like an 85 three or something, because he is chicken out the corner, man, like y'all seen in the clips. Whether it's an easy open catch and shoot off dotting dot them off a of rotation or a 14% contested, this build is able to make tough shots. And then for free throw, we go 71. We want to be able to knock down free throws and comp around. As we move on to finishing, we're going to go 80 driving dunk. Going 80 allows us to get silver takeoff and quick drops, which is the best dunk package in the game. This is huge because when a defender runs out to you and jumps to contest your three, you can actually drive to the paint and get a dunk before the help defense has a chance to get there. It's also really good for catching the ball on the backdoor cuts and getting easy dunks. Moving on, since we are a 7-2 center, even though this is a popper build, we gotta be able to mash in the paint. So we go 76 close shot. Going 75 unlocks that silver fast switch, which we're, we're gonna wanna use. And 76 in specific gives us that extra uh, finishing badge. 
And although you're not going to be in the paint all the time on offense, 76 is good enough, in my opinion, for instances where you do have to score in the paint, whether it's after getting a old board or on a backdoor cup, you're still able to do that with this build. Moving on, we're going to go 65 layup. We don't really care about the rating itself. This is strictly for getting that extra finishing badge. Same as standing dunk, we're going to raise it just by one to get an extra finishing badge. But as I can see in the clips though, although you're not going to be getting any crazy contact dunks, 71 standing is more than enough to consistently dunk in the paint. And after an old board or after a backdoor cut and you get stuck down there, you're more than able with this build to finish consistently. As we move on to what makes this build unique over other center builds, the playmaking. We're going to start with 86 pass accuracy. I know the typical big usually tends to go 76 pass accuracy for the gold break starter and just think that's enough, but going 86 gives us Hall of Fame break starter which is super glitchy and makes scoring on the break so much easier for your team. 86 also gives us that Hall of Fame floor general which although this badge doesn't help you at all, having, having it Hall of Fame gives plus 4 to all of your teammates offensive attributes which is huge. It's honestly why whenever we play with corner, I'm shooting 7 for 7, and when he's not on the court, I shoot 1 for 9. <laughs> nah, man, let me stop. The 86 pass accuracy is nice, not only for the badges you get, but for the speed of the pass as well. In instances where most center get stuck with the ball in the corner and they have to wait for the PG to come to their hip to get it, corner can see the floor and make the right pass, and a lot of the times it leads to a wide open shot. As we move on to ball handle, we leave it at a 51. We can't really lower it because it's tied to our pass accuracy. So if we lower our ball handle, it lowers that as well. And then for speed with ball, we want to go all the way to a 50. <laughs> and I know what y'all thinking, man. Bro, you're chilling us, right? You got 40 excel and 50 ball handle. Why are you wasting attributes on speed with ball? Let's go ass. All right, <laughs> I promise y'all there's a reason. And the reason is what y'all see on the screen right now. Play making takeover. Play take on the center is in my opinion the best take you can have because you help out your entire team so much. And I want to show you guys why it's necessary to upgrade speed with ball. As we back out and if we lower our speed with ball even by just one take from 50 to 49, we no longer have the ability to get play take. So trust me guys, when I'm labbing a build, I tweak every possible thing and come out with the best result. That's why it's important to follow the exact attributes that I'm putting. Well, that completes the attributes of the build. I recommend you use either team ratings or team takeover um, for the first take, and then for the second slot to use box out wall glass take. As we load out though, we get the build name break starter. Now I'm gonna quickly show you guys the best badges to use. So starting off with finishing, it's super important to add plus two of your extra badges here in order to get 16 total, and that allows you to use silver fast switch, which is a must have for mashing in the paint. Without fast switch, you will go up so slow when attempting a close shot that in comp prime, the defenders will have more than enough time to get there and contest you and make you miss. You also want to use silver takeoff and bronze slithery to help with your quick drops, and then silver aerial wizard for scoring off the offensive rebound. The rest of the badges can be your preference. For shooting, these are the badges I would use and that I think are the best. In my opinion, you don't need to add any extra badges here. We already have the 16 total, so we're able to use the tier 3 badge, which as y'all see is catch and shoot silver. I would core catch and shoot silver, and that it gives you the 6 extra, and then you run your green machine, claymore, brown blinders, clutch shooter. You actually have a, a lot of badges here, so you definitely don't need to add any extra to shooting. For playmaking, this is where you can add the rest of your extra badges in my opinion. You want to add at least one so you're able to run all the badges you see here and also a tier 3 badge. Depending on how many badges you have, um, I know like if you haven't done any of the level 39 seasons, you only have plus 4. Meanwhile, some people can have all the way up to like 9 or 10 already, I believe. So depending on how much badges you have to add to playmaking, you can get either Needle Threader Bronze or Needle Threader Gold or like Dimer Bronze or Dimer Hall of Fame. So yeah, and then as y'all see in that top left, Clan Breaker, I do use Clan Breaker and I do recommend it, even on a 7-2 center, because rim running out the corner, you do sometimes get the Clan Breaker animation, which leads to an easy dunk. Moving on to defense, I usually always say to add majority of your extra badges here, but in all honesty, 29 seems to be the perfect amount to get everything you need. And remember, these are the badges that corner uses and rerun a five out offense. So if you're you're an outside center that still sets screens and picks and pops, and you probably want to add your extra badges here in order to get that silver brick wall. But for a, a center that spots up in a five out, I don't think you need brick wall. But let's say you do have the double core option. 
which would be the best case scenario if you hit 39 in multiple of the seasons. One of the options was a double court defense with no shooting, like y'all see on the screen right now. I recommend you run that. You'll be able to core anchor and core rebound chaser, so you have eight extra badges to work with. You'll be able to run your brick wall silver and still have badges extra. That completely finishes the outside center build. I know the video is getting a little long, but I'm just going to quickly show you guys the best inside center, in my opinion. The vitals stay the same, center position with everything else preference. What changes though is the body settings. Instead of 7-2 like the outside, I found that the 7-1 uh, is the best for an inside center simply because of the extra speed, excel, and vertical you get as an inside. And those attributes are specifically are key attributes you want high on an inside center. Just like the outside, we're maxing out the wingspan, but what changes here is the weight. As an inside center, you're 100% going to be setting screen for your PG almost every possession. So we want to go 86 strength in order to get that gold brick wall. And to do that, we need to go 253, uh, 243 pounds. And then body shape is preference, I like both. Starting with physicals, we're going to completely max out the speed at a 65 and then raise our acceleration to a 53. And I know y'all probably saying to yourselves right now, Didn't you just say for the other build, you only need 60 speed for a center? And why are you raising your acceleration? You're not going to speed boost. So I did say that you only need 60 speed before, but that was for an outside center, especially one in five out where you're going to be spotting up. For an inside center where you're setting screens and you're slipping to the paint a lot of the times, you want to be as fast as possible in order to slip fast. For strength, like I mentioned before, we want to go 86 in order to get that gold brick wall, which is going to be a must have. Uh, this is definitely something you're going to want to use. For vertical also, we want to go 80 vertical. This is a little bit better than the than the 7-2. Seven, uh, 7-1 seven seven gets 80 vertical. Vertical is super glitchy this year. I'm telling you, being in the paint all the time for the old boards and stuff, vertical is super nice to have. And uh, for stamina, I know we took a hit on stamina on the other build. But for a build like this, where you're going to be constantly setting screens and running back and forth or the pain going back and down, setting screens, setting screens, you run out of stamina pretty fast. So we want to actually have higher stamina on this build. Moving on to interior, we're going to go 83, which gives us that extra badge. And then for perimeter, we're going to max it out to a 64. Now you get that extra badge all the way down at a 58. So going from 58 to 64 doesn't give me much. But uh, after getting everything I wanted on this build, I was left with extra attributes, which is why I was able to max on perimeter and my steel, like y'all see. For block, just like the other build, you can get 99, but I still think it's on, it's better to only get gold and go 93 to save on attributes. For rebounding, though, this is where it's a little bit different. Like I said, this is strictly an inside build, and after doing PNR, you're going to be in the paint every time a shot gets up on offense, most likely. So we actually want to go 99 old board to get that Hall of Fame rebound chaser. You also get Hall of Fame pogo stick, but I don't think you're going to be using that. But yeah, being an inside center, you're going to be in the paint all the time. So I think 99 old board is going to be super glitchy for defensive rebound. We leave it where it is because we can't afford to get any more for pass accuracy. We're going to go the same. We love getting our playmaking takeover on our bigs. So we're going to go 86 pass accuracy to get that Hall of Fame break starter. Now the, the ball handle and speed of the ball is a little bit different for ball handle. I raised it up um, to 54, which gives you that extra badge and then speed with ball. You actually don't need to go to a 50. You could just stop it at a 48. I tweaked it every little attribute and I was able to get the play take with these ratings. For finishing, we're going to go 86 driving dunk. This is really nice because it gives us that gold limitless takeoff, which allows us to finish strong and from and dunk from deep when catching the ball on the slip. And it also unlocks contact dunks, which even if the defender does close out in time and rotates to the paint, you can still meter dunk on them pretty consistently. This also ties in with our acceleration. We upgraded it a little bit because a lot of times when you catch the ball in the perimeter, you can utilize your excel to make a quick move and get a dunk. Moving to close shot, this is going to be our bread and butter and basically our main offense on this build. A lot of the times when playing PNR, you're going to have to mash in the paint when catching the ball on the slip. And what better way to do that than getting 85 close shot, which unlocks gold fast twitch and gold mash as well. For layup, we go 73 just to get that 19th badge. And then standing dunk, we go to 82 for that extra badge as well. Although not only for the badge, because having 80 plus standing dunk actually unlocks pro standing contact dunks, which is nice to have in your bag as like a little bailout. And then finally for post control, we go 66, which gives us a total of 22 finishing badges. After this, we just throw the rest of our ratings onto free throw, which we get a 65. And it's not the best, but it's definitely enough to knock down free throws consistently if you do know your timing. 
And as we load out, we get play, rim, and glass take, which is exactly what we want. I'm gonna back out though and quickly show you guys what would happen if you just miss one attribute, like how I did on the outside version. We lower ball handle just by one, and as y'all see, we completely lost the ability to get play take. That's why it's super important to follow every single attribute. The same thing with uh, speed with ball. If you lower speed with ball just by one from 48 to 47, you lose the ability to get play take. So I lab this build perfectly. I tweak every little thing. And this is it for the build, for the attributes. I would recommend you running team ratings or team uh, team badge. And then box out wall is your second. As we load out, you'll see we'll get the build name of Diming Paint Beast, which I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda comp. Um, I know this video is getting long, I'm just going to quickly go through the badges for this inside version and then I promise you the, the video is over. Starting with finishing, these are the badges I recommend using. You have your gold limitless takeoff, silver slithery. You want to add at least one badge of your extra badges to finishing in order to use the silver rise up like y'all can see. Uh, after all having all these badges equipped, I have five badges left. And I need to add that one more in order to use Silver Rise Up. What you can also do and what would be perfect if you have it is using the core pattern of double finishing and no shooting like y'all see on the screen right now. This will allow you to core, masher, and fast twitch with our both tier 3 golds. And it will leave you with 8 extra badges which you can use to get gold aerial wizard which you won't have, um, you won't have regularly. And then other badges you want to try, maybe post spin or acrobat or other things like that. This works perfectly because since you have no shooting on this build, you don't need to core anything for shooting. So for shooting, uh, like I just mentioned earlier, we're not going to get nothing here. So let's just quickly move to playmaking. For playmaking, it's similar to the outside version. The main stuff we're going to have is that Hall of Fame Break Starter and Hall of Fame Floor General. Then if you want to add extra badges here, like I recommend you do, you can have that Hall of Fame Post Playmaker or Hall of Fame Dimer, Gold Needle Threader. It's up to you. Now on this build, unlike the outside version, you're either going to want to add a lot of your extra badges here in order to run the three tier three badges that you need, or instead of the double core finishing like we mentioned earlier, you can use the double core defense with no shooting, which I think would be a lot better. This would allow you to core Hall of Fame Rebound Chaser and Gold Brick Wall, and then that would allow you to use Gold Anchor as well. So in my opinion, the best possible scenario is the double core defense with no shooting, and then with your extra badges, you add them to playmaking and finishing. So that concludes the complete breakdown of both the outside and inside prime center build. I hope you guys enjoyed and found the information helpful. Comment corners one of one if you watched all the way through. If you're interested in my other prime build breakdowns, the lockdown, the guard, these are on the screen right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps me out so much. Until next time, I really appreciate y'all. Peace.